Let's start with a simple multi-criteria decision-making problem. Assume you want to buy a house and have four options. You want to decide which option is the best for you. Assume that you have three criteria for this decision. The first is the size of the house. The second is its accessibility to public transport. And the third is the price. Because you have more than one criterion for this selection, it becomes a multi-criteria decision-making problem, which is also referred to as an MCDM problem. How would you decide which option is the best for you? There are a range of multi-criteria decision-making methods that can be applied to solve this. Let's use a very general method. First, you need a scale to assign scores to options with respect to the criteria. We can use a 1 to 9 scale. If an option is extremely satisfying to you with regard to one of the criteria, it receives a score of 9. And if it is extremely dissatisfactory, it receives a score of 1. You assign scores to these four options with respect to each one of these criteria. For example, you need to decide how good option A is with regard to size and assign it a score. Then, you need to decide how good it is with regard to accessibility and assign it a score. Finally, you need to decide how good it is in terms of affordability and assign it a score. After you've assigned scores for the first option, you need to do the same for all the other options. By doing so, you determine the scores for all the options with respect to these three criteria. Next, you determine how important each of these criteria is to you. You compare these criteria and say for example, size is 20% important, accessibility is 20% and price is 60%. So weighings are assigned to these criteria. It is now easy to identify which option is the best. You need to multiply the weighings of the criteria by the scores and the sum of the scores for each option represents its value. The option that has the highest value will be your best option. But, in many cases, the problem is not this simple to solve. For instance, the above example related to the selection of a house to purchase. Buying a house is a long-term decision and will impact your life for a relatively long period of time. You might be doubtful about the weighings of the criteria. When you are asked to assign weighings of importance to the decision criteria, you may become concerned with things that may happen and which may impact the weighings of these criteria. Let's refer to these things that may happen as likely or possible events. One possible event may be the fact that you see yourself getting a promotion or a more highly paid job in the near future. If this happens and you get a more highly paid job, your income will increase. If your income increases, the importance of the price of the house, which is one of the criteria, will decrease. Under this scenario, you may not care as much about the price of the house as long as the other options are performing well with respect to the other two criteria. Now, you need to answer this question. If event A happened and you get the more highly paid job that you have in mind, what would be the weighings of the criteria? Let's say if this happens, the weighings of the importance for size, accessibility and price will become 40%, 40% and 20%. Now the case becomes interesting because you have two different sets of weighings depending on what may happen in the future. The question is how should we consider such uncertainty in the decision making process? This is where the stratified multi-criteria decision making method may help.